Evening all. Hello. <clears throat> really annoys me when things are upside down on the thing and I don't know why because the mess, the craft army that is currently occurring on my desk. It's a craft army, craft a lunch, craft a cane. All together. It's a bit crazy. Right, okay, so we will be doing some art journaling tonight. We're going to be using some Inca balls and dilution spray and stamps. And if it all goes to plan, it's going to look beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. If it doesn't, then we change the plan. Well, the plan, in fairness, the plan does change itself, doesn't it, when we're art journaling? We don't need to change the plan. The plan adapts itself and does what it likes. And that's okay. So, yeah, so I'm going to be using some inkables. I've grabbed some 6 by 6 inkables. I feel like I haven't used any for a while. And I use them a lot. Um, like off screen, shall we say. Um, I, was like, I don't think I've used any in a life for a while. So I thought, yeah, I'll grab some dilution spray. Now, these are my three favourite colours at the minute. Um, and... With the products coming up this month, you will, you will see I have used them on something else. Um, but that's for a later day. Um, but so I'm sort of going with a vibrant blue, a vibrant pink, a mushy peas. Like I say, on the thing that I, the other thing I've been making, I have used um, a very, very lime citrus green. And Sam said it was a bit much <laughs> on some packaging. She went, oh, she says it's nice, she says but it's a bit much. So worried it might hurt the eyes. Um, but <laughs> but on here, so I've toned it down to sort of like this mushy pea style green. Um, so thank you all for joining me tonight. If you're joining me currently live on Facebook, if you could share only to groups that want it because I know, or to your own profiles, because I know Facebook makes suggestions for, for groups that don't want it. So, you know, I'm not saying listen to Facebook. I'm saying share it wherever you want. <clears throat> and what have you that would be great i would vastly appreciate it if you're watching this later on youtube please click subscribe if you're watching it live on facebook go over to youtube later and subscribe to the channel that's helpful right so we'll be using like i say we'll be using these dilution spray ink again it seems a while since i've used them in a live and i love them i heart them they're beautiful um so we want to make sure um oh fiona whilst you're there darling i did see your message earlier i haven't had time to read and respond to it though um so i will do that as soon as i come off the live okay so we're going to be using these now this is the journal that currently has the most pages in it towards completion so what i'm going to do is when i work in this journal for a while i'm going to work in like the opposite pages you know you saw me do this in, in my six by six white one when i was thinking it so for example if I've got a page, one page that's done, I'm going to try and do the opposite page. So at least, do you see what I mean? The doubles are done. So I thought, because I'm planning to use some butterflies tonight. Not the dude like butterflies. Some birds and butterflies butterflies. So I thought opposite there, with some spraying, can I use the dilution paints on here? That's sort of like a variation on a theme, for want of a better description. Right. Now, if you haven't used dilution spraying before i'm just going to start putting some stuff out to cover me what if i break the description cover me area um if you haven't used a dilution spraying before they're absolutely stunning they are the reason i got into doing um this style of crafting to be honest the dilutions ink sprays or what took me from I have to take that down. Um, or what took me from a very um, organized in terms of my projects, not in terms of my craft room. They're not, you know, but a very organized, meticulous scrapbooker. So I used to scrapbook and the pages. I have to say I was I was always not a fan, not um not very good at the white space. I used to use a lot of different pattern papers as well or fill with embellishments. Um but all the photos were triple layered and all the pages were symmetrical and everything was lined up straight and and that's how I used to scrapbook. Okay. I haven't done a lot of scrapbooking recently. I wonder if I'd still do it that way. But there we go. 
Um, there's a question only I can answer when I start. Um, yes, I do appreciate there seems to be a lot of lives going on tonight. So if you're here, I do appreciate it. I very much do. If you've got others and you've got other devices, I t I'm totally cool if you have me on one device and someone else on another one. You know. So you can jump in and out. Or that. That's totally fine. Um, congratulations to those people that won a prize on this month, on the January challenge. Um, we had so many entries. Um, and bless her, trying to whittle it down. Sally was having an absolute mare, shall we say. Um... So I basically said to her, I said, well, if you get it to three, we'll do some runners-up prizes. <laughs> because it had to be done. Anyway, sorry. Dilusions. So congratulations to those peeps. There is a new challenge up. So go and have a look at that. So, yeah. So these are your dilution spray inks. Okay. So these are a water-based dye ink. Okay. They are a brilliant colorant to porous surfaces. So you can't... These aren't... They're not like an alcohol ink or anything like that. You can't use them on a plastic or um a metal or anything like that it's not gonna work that well um do you know what i mean so it's it but they do they ghost really well you can um force dry them with your craft tool and all this sort of thing the only thing is they are really vibrant they are really inky so if you are going on to a non gesso surface especially like this one here you are going to have to be prepared for a little bit to go through and if you do want to highlight with a white pen or something like that okay um i do say leave it 24 hours you've got to wait till it's even if you heat set it okay wait 24 hours before you go back in with your white pen for your highlights because it really does saturate deep into the fiber of um the cardstock in your journal or your pages and whatever Okay. Now that being said, I probably should have thought of this because this is, I'm working in Medina Wakely Media Journal um, and this is a very poor surface so this might not go exactly out of plan but it's okay. So my first 6x6 six six we're going to be using is the Chrysanthemum. Now this is the Chrysanthemum 6x6, six six. there is also a Chrysanthemum um big one that looks slightly different it's definitely the sounds the chrysanthemum big one looks more like the dahlia six by six just because we like to be confusing and make life more difficult than it needs to be but <laughs> not intentionally but it just happens okay different people different devices on the tv on yep totally totally cool we're fine with that right now i will say I will say, when I got my journal out, because I've, I've been thinking about this inkable all day, wanting to use it in different ways, and I was like, shall I use texture paste? And then I couldn't find my texture paste, and I still can't find my texture paste. And what have you. Um, and I can't lie, when I got my journal out and put it on there, I was disappointed. And I'll tell you for why. I had this image in my head of being able to do like lots of them all over the page, but I think I need one of the big, Dina, 10 by 14s to do what was actually in my head um, and I don't have one of those because no one gave me one for my birthday just saying um, if you watch um, Chit Chat Friday with Sam by the way that's a much better joke than if you don't um, so so in fairness they are going to have to I'm going to have to work them together slightly differently than I wanted because I have this image in my head of having loads of them all over but I am thinking about getting Billy to maybe do one inside a texture disc maybe do like a floral set of texture discs so that i can that's a really good idea i'm glad i had it right <clears throat> so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to work here to start with now the beauty of it is if some does go on the burlap page next to me i actually don't care Right, so we're going to give these a little bit of a swill, just to mix them up -y. Okay, and I'm also going to get a little bit, I'm not too worried if a bit goes on because I'm going to fill these with other stamps and what have you. But we're going to go in with the Blue Lagoon first. Okay. These are also really reactive with water. They're great for painting with. 
I have to say you can fill up water brushes and paint with them that way or you can put them into a palette like your distress ink palette and go that way I'll tell you what I did forget to do let's get some cardstock to clean with <laughs> So as you can see, the ink stays pooled on that template quite well. So I'm just going to lift that off. And look at that, isn't it beautiful? So I'm going to press that onto there. Now, what I am going to do is, like I say, these are really reactive. They blend together really well. They're great for coverage as well. You know, but we've used those for different things oh see look we've even got some cool where the ink comes out they're exceedingly fluid okay so there's your negative look at that isn't that absolutely stunning anyway just what i was saying we're going to heat set between layers i can't stop them blending at all for example we were doing the gloss sprays last week okay that would be a fantastic way to stop them blending at all because once they're dry that's it but I'm really shocked that hasn't come through. That says a lot about the, the, the journal cardstock, to be honest. Um, if you used your gloss sprays and dried in between, that wouldn't happen because once they're dry, they are set. Okay. Sorry, I'm just having a little check of that. You said the room on your desk was six by six, so I didn't think you wanted one. It's a valid point, to be honest. It is. It's it, it's valid. It's valid. Right. So where's my towel? Because I'm just going to want to take off any excess of this before I go in with my next colour. Okay. So, and then here, just slightly overlapping. I need another piece of cardstock because I didn't go at the top or bottom because I'm an idiot. Right. We're going to go in with our lemon zest. Well, that spray was a bit reluctant. Another piece of card. See, had I thought ahead... I would have got some six by six pieces of card ready, but that's okay. Again, we'll lift this off and put that in the top corner, and, and hopefully I'll be able to get the next one on as well. So do you know what? I'm going to turn this into sort of like a print. It's getting all the reverse bits on. So you see where there was some blue left on there, we've got the green. And again, that's cool. It's sort of like a... It reminds me, have you seen those really cool jellies where people, like they're the gelatin from desserts and people make the flowers in them? I feel like I'm talking rubbish, but I'm sure you know what I mean. Right. Then we will go down here. Let's this out of the way. With I think we'll go with our mushy peas. Okay. Well, I can tell I haven't used these in a while because that was a lot richer than I was expecting. That's beautiful. I'm loving that I'm getting like double prints. This is brilliant. You know, because it's not like we all have enough bits of card and stuff that we're trying to use up, is it? Well, it's like triple prints, actually. Oh, that's pretty. Because it's really got like the detail out there. Okay, so I didn't dry, dry between the last two because I knew there wasn't going to be much overlap, but I am going to dry here. And 
and then we will put the last one on as bubblegum pink. I have to say, that mushy peas, that is, that's lovely. I feel like I've really forgotten something there. But I'm loving the, the print off it as well. It's absolutely stunning. Don't you just love rediscovering as well? I think that's one of the nice things about when you get a new Inca ball or something like that because you you do sort of like, oh you, you get some of your other mediums out that maybe you haven't played with before i mean like i say this isn't new it's just ones i haven't got out for a while um so we'll take that one there and then i'm gonna go in for a really sort of bold bubblegum pink right so we're gonna try and get as much of it on as possible I feel like I should have done that with the yellow, but I don't know. I do like the blue lagoon. I'm just going to talk to myself for just for a second. Right. Okay. Let me put that to the side. Eep. I have to say I have done before a series of, you'll find them on Instagram, but I'll try and find the pictures and put them um, in the group. I did a series of, I think I still have some left, but I did give some away for birthdays. I did a series of birthday cards. Well, they weren't really birthday cards. They were just cards using this i did different colors so i did a blue one an orange one a pink one and whatever so i did a set of four so this is a six by six card just with a white layer and a sentiment off the ticket tape words and they're so easy okay and so i've like i've done some white pen highlights easy peasy card which is why I made a series of four. Let me see if I've got any other colours left in my cards you're allowed to give away box. Does anyone have one of those at home? Oh, I do. I've got two of them. I thought I'd given away more than that. Okay. So the, I must have gave away the pink one. <laughs> um, yeah, does anyone else have that? I have a basket um, that's the cards you're allowed to give to people. Mum, I need a birthday card. You look in the basket. That's where the cards are that you're allowed to give to people. And now I have a Christmas one, and for the for the Christmas that me and that we're doing. But um, I'm really behind. Alison's like storming off her head. But they're good, aren't they? So it's it's you know, and that's blending through. Sorry, not distracted. Right. Let's get our bubblegum pink. We'll give that a little mixy mixy. Does anyone know how to emboss stencils on a calibre? Yes, I do, Tracy. Give me two minutes and I will show you how. She says, confidently, thinking, where did I put my calibre plates? Right, you do need the tan mat. So, and again, we'll go in with our bubblegum pink. Oh my God, it's just so beautiful. Right. Oh, I didn't get my card for me print. Hang on. Yup. And yes, I do have to make that noise every time I bend down. Okay, so I've got this cool print here that you could obviously add stuff to. You could put your template back on and doodle. Loads of stuff. I keep telling myself I'm going to be patient enough to actually draw this out and then freehand cut it. Um, in one of my journals so you can sort of you know like in one of the six by sixes so you can see through the pages so i don't know about you the six by sixes i see so many fantastic tutorials of people um cutting the pages into shapes i mean i know i did a wibbly edge on that one but you know it is a wibbly edge it's not really so because i did get a bit vivacious with this spray we have got a little bit of blur in here but that's absolutely fine we'll make sure that that's where one of the butterflies 
that we're using those. Okay. It does seem like a lot to do, but you know how I love me doodling, like through all the tag templates and that, Sam? I don't see how this would be any different. Okay. I will say, yes, sorry, I just saw someone saying I could do with being off work for a year so I could use time to use my craft stuff. Um, I, when we used to have the high street shop or store, depending on your particular vernacular, um, the high street store, whatever, it's something we used to hear a lot, and I mean a lot, a lot. Sorry, I'm just getting me caliber because it's the machine I have. Um, is when ladies and it was mostly ladies I'm not trying to be rude it was mostly ladies retired and whatever they seemed to get busier and then with, and, and in fairness the main thing was I don't know how I found time to go to work right so you need I used to have instructions written on here that they've come off because I can't remember exactly. You need your raspberry plate. Your base plate and your tan mat. Okay. You never use sprays for stencils. Yes, yeah, so quick. So quick. Okay, right. So you're going to have to give me a minute here, Tracy. Because my instructions are, th are there. Look, I can see Emb. And that's all I've got. So we're going to have to guess because I can't remember. So we'll put, we'll try it this way first. It is one of two ways, my lovely. Okay, it's either tan mat, template, paper, raspberry mat, or we have to swap the paper in the, I'm sure. So bear with. And this is why, and this is why we use the 350 micron mylar for all of our inkables. And that's all of our inkables. So that's the new inkables tags, the inkable dinkables, the texture discs, the horizons. Oh, we should do some stuff with skylines next week. Anyway, um, what have you? We use the 350 micron mylar for all of that. And the reason being is so that if you do emboss them this way, you get a really good impression. I remember a lady once coming to me at Ali Pali and she was so disappointed. It wasn't that way then. And she was so disappointed because and she came to me and she said, Oh, you said to me last time I was here. We might have to move the embossing mat actually, but we'll see. Um, you said to me last time I was here about embossing the stencils to get an embossed background instead of using like an embossing folder. And I said, yeah. It's just like it doesn't work. I was like, what do you mean it doesn't work? My instructions were written on properly then. But in fact, the lady had a big shot and I said, that's fine, you just use the... There we go. You just use the templates for your cutting plates. So go. Base plate. Tan mat, card, face up, if you want the embossing, your inkable, and then your raspberry embossing plate, okay? Um, yeah, and she was really disappointed it, ha it hadn't worked. But in reality, she hadn't bought our inkable, she bought templates off someone else, and they just weren't thick enough for it, Okay. So does that help, Tracy? So the next time I'm doing this on a try out Tuesday and I get it wrong, I expect you to tell me. It's one of those things I just haven't done it for a while. But that's okay. That's no problem at all, lovely. That's why try it out Tuesday is here. But I will say looks beautiful on um, Perlai's card as well. But if you go to this side as well, look at that. Isn't 
that stunning? But you've got like the lines. I hate the phrase debossed, but you know. Okay, so is that helpful? Fabulous. You always get the sandwich sandwich wrong first time. Can you emboss on a big shot too? Absolutely. Right, so all of your six by sixes will definitely go through your big shot because we've done it before. Okay. On your main big shot, I am by no means an expert die cutter, emboss, or whatever. In fairness, I'm rubbish with machines and construction in general, but here we go. So on your big shot, on your base plate where you've got all the flappy bits, for one of a better description, you will have there's the instructions on there for all the different sandwiches. Okay. On those instructions, you follow the instructions for embossing with a brass stencil. Okay. Tan mat. On your caliber. It's a tan mat. That's what they call it. It's a tan, tan mat. Okay, but that's for your caliber. On your big shot, yeah, you follow the instructions for your brass stencil. I'll see if I can find these and put them all in, in the files on the group, actually, because that would be a really helpful thing, wouldn't it? Okay, so back to this page. Well, it's not actually back to this page because what we're going to do before we start adding some more stamps on, actually, we're going to give that a little bit more time to dry. We're going to get... I have actually done some stamping and die cutting today and we have got some birds and butterflies that's not that bird but we've got some of the birds and butterflies some embellishments i've got some from each set so we've got a real variety of sizes okay that's a good one. I, don't, I want to make sure we haven't got two. Same size as anything. Oh man, that's the little moth from the dragonfly set. He's so cool. Right. So. Oh, the white material I bossed, um, bossed onto. Oh, that's just some watercolour paper, darling. So it was actually quite thin. So if you were to use like a cardstock. Yeah, I mean, it was just me watercolour paper that I'm doing, like, I do me mop-up prints and stuff off. It's cheap watercolour paper, it's not very good. Um, but this is why I use it for this. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so if you're using, like, a good quality pearlised cardstock or something like that, you'll get an even more impressive result. Right, so I'm going to lay these out just a little. Alrighty, and we're going to go in with our sprays. Now these are, shall we say, a lot more forgiving than, for example, your um, gloss sprays. It's not a case of cleaning the nozzle every single time. It's not a case of, you know, even having to sugar them every single time. I'm just going to go slightly higher up. Okay. Um, it's just a case of getting in there, having a spray. Now, if you do not like cast off, from your sprays um dilution spray ink generate a lot of cast off pretty much everything i own is covered in ink anyway so i don't really worry about it too much especially in this particular little cupboard of mine um but if you are working in a box and honestly it will just catch the cast off um something i've seen really really good is um like a cereal box with one of the sides cut off um i don't know why i had to do that action um, you want the sides got off because that will give you sort of like a tray to work in. Okay. Righty ho. Sam, do we still have our big shot in the shop? Do you know? It's weird, you know, we haven't had like a retail shop shop for a really long time now. Um, because we spent so many years with one, I still call the unit and workshop the shop. So does Sam. Amazon delivery boxes. Yeah, but I've been trying to be good and not use Amazon too much. I 
I think we all got a little bit Amazon happy during the pandemic, didn't we? And then we all developed opinions on Jeff Bezos and decided we didn't want him anymore. <laughs> but that's a story for another day. Okay, so you can see, right, let me get a plain piece so it's easier to see. Right, so if you put all those on there now, you've got this, that's a bit funky, we could use that too. Um, you've got this gorgeous, and how quick was it? It was quick, easy coverage, okay? Now we do have, like I say, lots of the videos on YouTube, we're adding more and more from the back catalogue on Facebook every time. And these were used a lot at the beginning, so a lot of those YouTubes might be on. Um, so, yeah, we do. I have mine, but I've worn this short. Um, so, but you can see how quick that they were to cover. And because these have been stamped with Versafine Claire and left, you could use Archival, you could use Memento. Okay, and then Heat Set. Okay, when you go in with your sprays, they're not going to run. They're not going to make life difficult for you okay but like i say this is where the inkables um they are deeper they're deep they're 350 mark on serena you can absolutely pop in just let us know sorry i'm digress i'm digressing um if you want to come over you absolutely can um just give us a call to make sure we're there we're not there wednesday mornings um so you know, because we wanted to make sure everything you could possibly want to do with a stencil, you can do with a Bee Crafty Inkable. That is, that's the point. We want to make sure anything you want to do with a stencil, within reason, before anyone says anything, you can do with a Bee Crafty Inkable, okay? Because you can do, yeah, your explosion powders. We're waiting on delivery of explosion powders at the minute. You know, your brush shows, your Dilutions ink sprays, your blending, your gloss sprays, all of that. Not to mention texture paste, embossing on your machine. So we want to make sure we have all those available to you. But now I feel like I'm going on, so I'm going to move that to the side. And move these to the side. Honest to God, on my left hand side everything's now about a foot off the desk. So I am fearing a craft launch. Right. I'm absolutely loving this bubblegum pink. I mean, isn't it just stunning? So I have got out some of my other, what I feel like have been abandoned six by sixes. Okay, my swirling circles. I think they might be a bit too big for this project. Like I said, in my head, I'd envisaged a much bigger page. Um, the Harlequin, that is definitely going on. Definitely, definitely. My Distressed Diamonds, no, because I'm going to use my Harlequin. My Perspective Dots, always handy. These, the Butterflies. That stencil looks clean. Some of them are clean. Not all of them. For example, that one. Um, now, my Honeycomb. So, if you look, the Honeycomb, the original Honeycomb, and the harlequin okay along with the hound's tooth um were actually the original inkables okay so this was probably a prototype at one stage because when i started doing art journaling i wanted something that you could easily do a corner on so for example you know if you wanted to do a corner you could just mask that off and it goes all the way around your corner Okay, and obviously I've got the Harlequin for that. And also, if you wanted to do a small patch, you've got a small patch there. You haven't got to worry about it. And like I say, this was our very first Inkables, our first, first ones. Um, and I still absolutely love them. Not enough to clean them, obviously, because that would be weird. Um, right, but what it did do, um, Sam touched on this on Chit Chat Friday a little bit, uh, when I was a precise crafter indeed, um, is there, there is this is two of them, but there is actually now four different honeycombs. You know, everybody loves a circle. Obviously, Janie is still the circles and she loves her circles, but I love honeycomb as well. 
Um, I think you know, gotta love a hexagon. It's a beautiful one. I think I think as crafters we do like hexagons um, and circles. I think it's that lovely sort of flow, and I think hexagons have that because they all flow together. Um, so there are four different honeycomb inkables available in the six by six alone. Okay, so because we have the honeycomb, this is honeycomb full. Then we have honeycomb three and honeycomb multi. Okay, so you do have the four different ones that are absolutely luscious. Right, so we're going to do some ink blending through these and we're going to add some stamping. I'm so sorry, tonight seems to be taking forever and I think it's because I'm trying to cover everything and you can't cover everything, but I am going to flipping well try. My pink raspberry's gone missing, but there's me mustard seeds, so we'll keep that for after. Okay. <clears throat> So we'll go in with some Kitsch Flamingo, I think. You forget to use sprays. I think the thing is as well. No, Kitsch Flamingo isn't going to cut it. I need to find my pick raspberry. I think the thing is with sprays as well. We have it in our head that they're going to make a massive mess. That they're going to take ages to clean up. Um have you and in reality i don't think they do any more than blending tools and all that sort of malarkey so right so let's go in with our picked raspberry got some of these gorgeous harlequins in i'm gonna keep it bright we are gonna add some black in though because obviously we've got the black from the stamping at some point and then I think we'll go with rustic wilderness and we'll add in some perspective dots okay but not there so yeah I don't want a really small one so I'm just going to push this out it's about that one I think add those on there okay then some honeycomb look that you could you could then spray over the top you could use your gloss sprays as well you don't need you know you don't need to mutually exclusive use dilutions or gloss or oxide mix them up that's where you have them when I'm starting a collection of a new product, okay? Because I don't have I don't have all of any of them. I think I might have that's a lie actually. I think I might have all the dilutions, but that's because I started collecting them first. Um and the palette doesn't be ex expanded as quick as the distress. Um when you know I'm I'm building a collection. So say you've got some oxide sprays and some gloss sprays and you're like oh i want some dilution sprays what i would do there is i would pick colors to fill in some gaps because then you could mix in for example the bubblegum pink there is a beautiful but there is a beautiful vibrant pink in all of them so in this you've got the bubble, bubble, blah, 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 bubblegum pink in gloss spray you've got the magenta in distress oxide sprays you've got picked raspberry okay but if I wasn't able to complete collection, I wouldn't have that colour in each one. I would, I'd say, right, well, I'll get bubblegum pink in that and then I'll get an orange oxide spray and then I'll get the lime green gloss spray. Do you see what I mean? So that you, you're you covering your palette, but with an assortment of sprays. And then, you, you know, and then as you progress, if you're like, oh, no, I actually want to get the other. The only exception is white. In dilutions and gloss spray, you need the white. In both because you just do and I said so right so I'm gonna go in my dinkables I keep in folders my inkables tags I always keep on the ring and my texture discs um, I'm putting back on rings I have to get some rings because I use the rings for something else right so I'm gonna go in with some honeycomb and 
This is a good thing. So you can just tuck your wrinkable in. Bend it down. And lift it off. And then it goes all the way to the edge. Yeah? You have nowhere to store them. Nowhere to store what? I use... I'll take pictures for you. I use... Um, I'm lucky enough that I have a cupboard to sit in. I appreciate that. Um, I use um, nail varnish racks. And right, and then we're going for the last one. So we need a blue. I think a broken track. Oh, Mermaid Lagoon. Mermaid Lagoon will go with should go with Blue Lagoon quite nicely, shouldn't it? Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of our Mermaid Lagoon Oxide and use some of these random butterflies because then that's going to start building that butterfly look for when we want to add our other butterflies on okay a texture disc it's a different sort of inkable it's a circle one if i can find mine which i can't i had one last week didn't i face it that's not going to have been put away that's a te texture disc they come in sets of five funky patterns so I know I referred to them quite a lot tonight haven't I alrighty so with my mermaid lagoon now one of the reasons I wanted to go through the inkables here with um, distress rather that you could use your regular distress ink with distress instead of spray is I don't want to reactivate the sprays underneath and if I spray them it will okay so I sort of, because oh hello that's not gonna work is it think of this as sort of like a dry application for want of a better description I am just gonna just work it in a little bit but not over all areas so some of them will have really dark butterflies some of them it'll be more of a hint of butterfly and we'll turn it round a little bit so that they're not all looking exactly the same. Now the beauty of this is, obviously, I'm using the Mermaid Lagoon over the Dilusions. We definitely need one there. Um, or maybe three little ones would be better. Um, now, because of that, when I go over that, over the bubblegum pink, they're going to give a sort of purpley tone. Over the lemon zest, they're going to give a green tone. So it sort of does a lot of work for you as well. You throw away the contents of the kitchen and use that space. Oh, yeah, why not? Okay, so we're going to carry on adding on some of these and then what we're going to do is we're just going to start bringing in some other stamps. And what that's done, I'm actually going to add in another couple down here. I do think they look especially beautiful over the bubblegum pink, don't they? Um, now what that has done is that has turned this into a butterfly theme page, but we haven't added any on yet. Okay. Just through our, I think that one's butterfly multi. Um, that's if I have something, if we have something on the in, in the inkables that's varying sizes of the same sort of thing it's a multi so there's a hearts multi a stars multi a honeycomb multi a butterfly multi because there's multiple sizes see i don't always name them in a silly way some days it does actually make sense thank you very much right <clears throat> do the funny thing i've created a pile of stash next to me i actually don't know if i'm going to be able to get out <laughs> So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to get my stitchy borders. Um, 
my love, my heart, my dream, my stitchy borders. Okay. Now with these, you can do two things. Now, what I, one thing I particularly like to do with the measuring tape is actually take some scrap. Well, I know this isn't actually scrap at present, but it's about to be. Okay, and then we will ink this up. Actually, I'm not going to do this on top of the book. I'm going to try and line it up right to the edge so I've only got to cut one side. Which I didn't do. I totally missed, I think. Okay. And I've overpressed there. But that's okay. That's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat set that. That's where I was hesitant. Okay, and this is my favourite thing to do with this particular stamp. Now, this one was one of the elements I used to put together the bigger collage stamps, like the Dragonfly Art and etc. Um, but I was specifically asked if I could do some of the elements separately because it would make them easier to use. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snip that off after nine I put that there I put that one up there and that's giving you that sort of white highlight which sort of brings in some of the white from the back yeah Honestly, it's one of my favourite border sets. I say that about a lot, nearly all of the border sets because I love using borders. I love using borders. And to, honestly, if someone said to me, right, you can't make any feature stamps ever again. You can only make, like, accessories. I reckon I could do that. I do. Right, I'm going to use this stitch here. Now, again, one of the reasons I use stitchy stamps, I'm going to move these to the side just so I'll do a bit more stamping. Um, one of the reasons I use stitchy stamps is because all sewing machines hate me. They do. They all hate me. I don't, I don't know why, because I'm a delight. Hold the laughter, please. Um, so when everyone was doing, like, using their sewing machines and stuff on their cards and scrapbook pages and all the sort of thing i couldn't do it because sewing machines hate me you know so i had to come up with another way and stamping is always the answer regardless of the question and what's lovely about this stamp in particular is it even even has the loose thread okay so you've even got that loose thread look so alrighty but if you're looking for something more fine and you're like well yeah I want faux stitch but I want something smaller there is also this one Okay, now it has more loose thread, but it has more of a crisscross effect, which a soft craft person would tell you the exact thing. Is it like overlocking? No, it's, that's not overlocking because I think this one's overlocking. I don't know. Right, so this one's got a really good loose thread section. So I'm just going to put that that way across there. Okay, and then. You do have an even skinnier one, which is just a thin, single sort of row stitch. I 
with a little crisscross section at this end and some loose thread here. So, you know what, we're gonna put that one there. Okay, and this is where, <clears throat> funnily enough, I've had a lot more questions this week about using stamp platforms. Well, our stamps work with stamp platforms. Of course they will, absolutely. But because of the way, I'm gonna say it, because, because of me, um, I can't, I can't use them. I've tried. I've used all of them. I really have, and I can't get the results I want. But I think it's because of how I craft. I do a lot of freehand. Um, and for example, if I want to put a border now across along this page of the journal, you can't get in there with a stamp platform, can you? However, if you take your stitchy stamp, okay, and you put it right on the edge. And just leave a little bit you can press your super skinny slim in roll it down and you're able to stamp really close to the edge and that's why okay and this and this is where you know but also now jane i believe jane sam and several others who shall remain nameless um on this section this stamp is all one stamp okay so you've got five sort of decorative dots that have got little bits of ledger in a hatchings pattern some dots and whatever you've got a star and some real sort of overlocking okay now what Sam, Jane, and the others are making, okay, they chop that off. They cut it in half. Choppity chop, chop, chop. Okay? The animals, I tell you. Animals! Saying that, my dog wouldn't chop up my stamps. Right. However, if you want to do a row of them, obviously it does make it a little easier. So I'm going to ink these up. Gonna do a row of them there, and then a row of them there. And again, these look lovely if you are wanting to cut them out and just put little circles on and add them as an embellishment that way. They look really, really pretty. Um, I'm just gonna put another one on, I think, because the two bit is driving me mad that one on there okay so then you've got those i have chopped mine up first time ever but i like it there you go sam loves it um sally i think it's sally might be again might be jane as well um she's a prolific stamp chopper off or off or the doodle art sunflower they cut the head off it so that they can use it independently I tell you! Right. So now we're going to start gluing some things down. I'm going to use my ultra thick gel medium from Dina Wakeley. And we're going to start Funnily enough, you say about fabrics. Now, obviously I'm a lady of a certain uh, for a start, don't laugh at lady. I'm a lady of a certain measure. There we go. And whatever. And I caught, sorry to myself, in a full length mirror today. That was horrific. I nearly cried. Anyway, I was thinking maybe it's just because it's a big expanse of blue. I wear solid colours. I was thinking maybe if I have, you know, if I was wearing a pattern, that would be nice. Maybe that's what I need to do be a bit happier with it who knows but yeah so the gel medium this ultra thick gel medium it's brilliant if you're trying it's just a brilliant gel medium but it's also fabulous if you're trying to create depth and structure okay so if you want something that looks more 3d or you're doing um, a mixed media canvas or something like that it's a good structural gel 
as well. Do you know, I cannot believe that there was a time where I was like, what's gel medium? Why would I want to use that? And that wasn't as long ago as it should be. Right, so let's get these little doofers back. Let's have a play with layout. Okay. So I'm going to round off some leaves. Yes, I know. Leaves? Wings? So what's on the inside that matters here? Cake. Right. So. That can't go there. Maybe there. Because what I don't want to do is put the colour on the colour. Okay. So I don't want to put... Oh, some merch. I don't want to put a pink butterfly on the bubblegum pink chrysanthemum. Okay. I want to put the varying ones exactly. Sorry, guys. I think I'm going to end up going a little bit over tonight. I'm usually finished by now, aren't I? How many is too many? Because it seems to be quite a lot. So I'm just checking. How many is too many? I might put that one right at the bottom. Is that tape measure? Tote bags. Do you know we actually used to do tote bags, Serena? We used to do really good bee crafty bags. Should put the moth on top of there. And then... Or put the ledger circle on top of there. Make it look a lollipop. Put him in there. You can never have too many butterflies. Are you sure? Well, yeah, because Rosie's agreed with you as well. So I just don't want it to be too much. That's all. <clears throat> right. Oh, I'm going to put that paintbrush in my water and get the palette knife. Steve, I think when you put in this man, many on, it doesn't matter if it's an odd number or not. And it's not. I'm going to move that one a bit further down so he's all sort of about halfway down that. I'll say that's all right because that'll dry clear. Don't mess with it too much. Okay. Now, obviously, what I am going to do is I am going to add on some white highlights here because I think these, the birds and butterflies, do need a little bit of that to bring the white from the back to the forward, to the front, okay? And I just think it just needs that. I think it needs that little bit more. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you now and leave, you the, leave this to dry overnight. And then tomorrow I will put the white pen on because I desperately think it needs it, but I don't think it would be right to add it now because it won't work because I've used... Thing is, now I will say <laughs> I'm very impressed with the um, I didn't do that one I'm very impressed with the um, cardstock in this journal now I knew it was really good cardstock I'm not saying that but it, because it's that um, sort of handmade cotton texture and very porous in all honesty I just assumed 
it would um, really sort of draw that ink in to the other side, and it hasn't. Um, in all in in all honesty, that all that does is give me an excuse not to gesso the next time I want to use dilution sprays in this journal. <laughs> um, because they worked so well. Um, so thank you so much for, for, for joining me this evening. I really do think this page does work well with what's on this page as well because, you know, you do have the white highlights and various other bits, which I'm really, really loving. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. I will, of course, put a picture up in the Be Crafty Stamps group when the page is done and the live will also be available on YouTube very, very soon. Um, right, so for the rest of the week, tomorrow I am in Crafting Together with All Brands at 2pm. So we'll be doing some crafting in there. We... Um, and then obviously that live will go onto YouTube as well. But if you can join me, that would be great. It, you know, it all helps. Um, if you see something in the Be Crafty Stamps group, assuming you're a member, if you're not a member, you should be a member of the Be Crafty Stamps group. There's a challenge. There's lots of Be Crafty inspiration. Um, and the DT are usually hanging out in there as well. So if you need any help, they're always there. And me and Sam are about too, but Sally's just really quick. Uh, <laughs> the YouTube channel, please subscribe. Thursday night, um, Jane will be here and she will be live again. And then Sam will be back on Friday for Chit Chat Friday, which is always fun as long as you know what you're having for tea. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining me. Um, and if you need any other help, um, please send us a message, send us an email or get in touch. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.